Coptos, better known as Crumb Online, is a 16-year-old artist and animator from the United States who since May of last year has been seeing a steady yet considerable amount of growth. Which is interesting. Since contrary to most of the other content creators I've covered in these Rise Of videos, most of them seem to have one defining moment that set off a rapid rise in growth. Examples of these moments include joining a prominent Minecraft SMP, or appearing on a popular Twitch show such as Love or Host. However, Crumb doesn't seem to have that. Still, it's undeniable that May of last year was the beginning of her rise in popularity, considering that at that point, her Twitter was beginning to pick up some serious traction. Not only this, but in the same month, she began to upload videos to her YouTube channel and began to post pictures to her Instagram account. So it was the month where she truly began to establish herself as a proper content creator. It also happens to be the month in which I started following Crumb, so I've pretty much been there since the very beginning of her rise. Which is pretty neat since I tend to only find out about most content creators I make videos on after they blow up. But she had started posting to her Twitter account a few months before her blow up, with her first ever tweet having having been published on January 14th, and little did she know that this tweet would be the inception of a series of fortunate events. See what it did there? It's a play on words of that Netflix show. Man, I'm, I'm not funny. Why did I even write that in the script? Anyhow, with all that being said, this is an excellent place to start the video off on, that being Crumb's beginnings. Let's dive right in. Now, I'd like to preface this section of the video by saying that I am aware that Crumb once had a prominent following on a prior Instagram account and an old animation app that no longer exists by the name of Framecast. However, since both that Instagram account and Framecast are no longer in existence, I will not be covering this in the video. I just wanted to say that before we got into anything else. Anyhow, as aforementioned, Crumb posted her first ever tweet on January 14th, 2020, in which she said so many schlatt at Jay Schlatt. Attached was a short two second animation of different variations of Schlatt's Ram mascot, my favorite of which is the one where he's wearing a suit. Following this tweet, Crumb would post her next one only nine days after the previously mentioned tweet. On January 23rd, she posted another piece of fan art with the caption, Apple? However, contrary to her last tweet, this was not an animation it was simply a drawing. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the inspiration for this drawing comes from the Just Roll With It show, which for those unfamiliar with it, is a Dungeons & Dragons podcast hosted by Slimesicle, Grizzly, Condefiction, and Bizly. However, it seems like Bizly is not featured in this fan art since he wasn't tagged by Crumb. Only Schlatt, Grizzly, Slimesicle, and Condefiction were tagged in this picture. Nonetheless, Crumb would continue to make fan art of others with little recognition from those she chose to make art of. Still, regardless of that, these first few tweets of hers all averaged hundreds of likes, so it's not like she was irrelevant and no one was seeing her work. As a matter of fact, by February, she had already amassed a total of 600 followers, according to a tweet she posted on the 1st of January of this year. So again, she had a small following to begin with, which did initially aid her for sure. However, it wasn't long before Chrome would be put on many content creators' as radars, as she continued to make fan art and animations of her favorite creators. Her first tweet to truly blow up was the one she posted on March 22nd, in which the caption says, Swagger out here asking the real questions though, at Swagger Souls at J Schlatt. Attached is an 18 second animation of a clip from Schlatt's video titled, This CSGO Video Will Make You Quit Smoking. More specifically, the clip in question is where one of the people in their CSGO lobby says that they've had three heart attacks. In response to this, Schlatt and Swagger act confused and are seemingly in complete disbelief at the fact that this man has survived three separate heart attacks, and I mean who wouldn't be? After the man confirms it by repeatedly saying yep, Swagger proceeds to ask him why this has happened to him. Following this, the who by Baba O'Reilly begins to play in the background, as the animation starts to pan towards Schlatt's forehead, where the word why begins to appear. Not only this, but after Swagger asks why, Schlatt's face just turns into one of pure disappointment. This is the first tweet of Crumbs that managed to surpass the thousand like mark, and as of the time I'm writing this script, it's sitting at almost 5,000 likes, 4,990 to be exact. Although what's most interesting about this tweet is that C Scoop, also known as Cooper, a popular creator that is friends with both Swagger and Schlatt, responded to this tweet by saying, holy fuck Lamau. Bear in mind that this was only 31 minutes after the original tweet was posted. Crumb, being seemingly baffled as a result of Cooper's response, replied to him saying, how did you see this lol? Her reply included a picture of Schlatt's mascot with 
the word Y on his forehead from the previously mentioned animation. It's likely that Cooper's reply signal boosted this tweet and helped it get to where it is today, considering that his reply alone has over 830 likes. But more importantly, it seems like this tweet caused the inception of Crumb's friendship with Cooper since he followed her back after seeing this tweet. Not only this, but just about an hour later, Crumb made a short looping animation of Cooper's fish mascot pogging, and she posted it to her Twitter. Cooper gave the tweet a like and even used the animation on his streams. It's clear to me that Crumb developed a strong friendship with Cooper behind the scenes since she continued to make fan art of him and more animations as well. I don't doubt that Cooper introduced her to other members of the community and that's how Crumb started to meet other content creators. However, that's merely speculation, I can't say that for sure. But from this point onward, Crumb continued to make fan art and animations of the content creators she most enjoyed watching. As a result, her follower count began to rise, which is excellent assuming the right circumstances are in place. I say this because what her followers didn't know is that this art that Crumb had been grinding out was all made on an old iPad with her finger. On April 9th, she tweeted, I draw and animate with my finger on an old iPad. And I've recently learned that if I use my finger and put too much stress on it or something, I have a high chance of getting carpal tunnel, which hurts a lot, I think. But for now, I'll keep drawing with my finger because I don't have anything else. She then quote tweeted her own tweet and added this onto it. If I get carpal tunnel, that's going to suck so much since art is like the only thing I can do okay. I'm going to ask some friends if they have old drawing tablets or something. But then, Poke, a well-known Minecraft YouTuber and Twitch streamer who was friends with Crumb, came in to be her saving grace by buying her a drawing tablet, just a few days after the aforementioned tweets were made. And this was a game changer. With Crumb now being equipped with a drawing tablet, the world was her oyster, and we were just living in it. She could do anything she desired. So a month after she received her drawing tablet in late May, Crumb began uploading videos to her YouTube channel. This decision would only benefit her in the long run since it would allow her to have a substantial following on not just one platform, but now two separate platforms. This also marked a pivotal moment in her online history since it allowed her to start making her own unique content instead of being pigeonholed to just being an MCYT fan artist, which is a fantastic thing since feeling confined to a particular content genre is nothing but horrible. However, before exploring this further, I reached out to Fuber, one of Crumb's Twitch mods, to ask her this question. Was it smart for Crumb to have started off as an MCYT fan artist, and did it help her get to where she is today? So when Crumb started getting her following, she primarily drew fan art of content creators from SP Live. One of the members, C Scoop, took notice and really enjoyed her fan art. Over time, she gained more recognition from other creators and fans through him, and it kept growing from there. Making art of things from an active fan base such as MCYT was a smart move, even though it wasn't even her intention to grow as big as she has. More content creators interacted with her, and more of them took notice, and in turn, more fans. That's when she started streaming and making content for herself. She turned to interacting with members of the Dream SMP and they took notice of her too, which gave her more of a spotlight. And although people mostly came for her fan art interactions with other content creators, I'm glad they're staying to admire her talents as an artist and animator. Thank you so much for being a part of the video, Fuber. Let's now move on to Crumb's transition into original content. As a content creator, especially an artist and animator, it's imperative that you do your own original work. Not every drawing or animation you put out has to be of your favorite Minecraft YouTuber or Twitch streamer. There needs to be something that makes you stick out amongst a sea of other fan artists. While Chrome was already doing a reasonably good job at this with using her cat mascot in tweets along with the constant misspelling of words in the captions, she was still very much reliant on making art of others. By this point, Crumb had garnered herself a following of about 24,000 Twitter followers. She had come pretty far as a fan artist, further than many others have, but she needed to move past this and move on to bigger and better things. This marked the point where she began uploading videos to her YouTube channel, which as of the time I'm writing this script, has amassed a total of over 228,000 subscribers. As previously mentioned, she began uploading videos to her YouTube channel in late May, with her first video having been uploaded on May 26, 2020. The video in question is titled No 
no one's around to help. And its premise is quite simple. It's her take on the Jerry Terry video with the same title. It's a video of Bob, the cat from Animal Crossing, dancing for a minute and 21 seconds straight with a vaporwave theme, both in the background and the music used in the video. However, for her video, Crumb used the exact same music, replaced Bob with her cat mascot, and looped to the animation of the cat dancing for the same amount of time as well, a minute and 21 seconds. Now, I can't deny that the video is quite mesmerizing. The music bangs and the animation is just so incredibly smooth to watch. It just locks you into a trance. Eret, a popular Minecraft content creator and member of the Dream SMP, even left a comment on the video saying, I am addicted to this video and have been for the past seven months, and I can sure as hell see why. Apparently, the video has also become a popular Discord emote, according to Crumb's pinned comment, so that's pretty neat as well. Not only this, but from the 22 videos up on her channel, this one ranks in the top 10 most popular videos, ranking at number 8 with almost 400,000 views and 41,000 likes. Nonetheless, from this first animation on her channel until now, she's improved her skills tremendously, and it shows especially when reading through her comment sections. Everyone is incredibly supportive, and it certainly is well deserved. Her improvement doesn't go unnoticed, which is excellent. Although what's interesting is that when reading her video descriptions, she states that she's still using her finger and an iPad to make these animations, so I wonder what happened to that drawing tablet she got. Anyways, Crumb is often known to create animations in which she uses Jack Stauber music, which for those unfamiliar with him, he's a famous musician on YouTube who's known for making very peculiar songs and music videos that accompany those songs. Thus far, Crumb has made seven animations in which she uses Stauber's music, my favorite of which is the one titled Fighter. However, Pad Thai is a close second just because of how spectacularly animated it is. So, Fighter was uploaded on January 20th, 2021, and it has since become Crumb's fifth most popular video, sitting at over 466,000 views and 52,000 likes. But over on Crumb's TikTok, Crumbington, it blew the hell up. Since its upload, it has accumulated 1,600,000 views and 642,600 likes. Ladies and gentlemen, TikTok is no joke. You can really pop the hell off on it if you cater to it adequately. And by doing just that, Crumb has garnered herself her largest following, even bigger than her Twitter. As of the time I'm writing this, she's amassed a following of 355,100 followers, surpassing her Twitter by 30,000 followers. It's madness, and what makes it even crazier is that she's only been posting on there since November of last year, just 8 months ago. Nevertheless, I consider this animation to be my favorite because I can personally relate to the message it conveys, being one of being shitty at video games. In the video description, Crumb wrote, no secret message or anything, I'm just bad at video games. And again, I can relate to this. There are very few video games that I've played throughout my life that I can say that I have been good at. Playing video games while just isn't one of my strengths, and if any of my friends happen to be watching this video, they can attest to that. Overall though, the animation is superb, just like everything else her channel has to offer. Crumb clearly has a knack for making stellar animations, and I'm sure that she'll only continue to perfect that talent as time goes on. It's irrefutable that Crumb transitioning from being a fan artist to doing her own original work was the right move. Had she never done it, she would have found herself between a rock and a hard place, unable to escape forever trapped in the endless cycle of making fan art. But it's also indisputable that had she not done it in the first place, she might have not made it as easily to where she is today. Not to mention all of the valuable connections she made with content creators during her time as a fan artist, which we'll be further analyzing right after this question. So you know me, I always like to get other people's takes, and to do so I reached out to Saturn, an artist and Twitter mutual of crumbs, to ask him this question. Do you think Crumb transitioning away from solely being an MCYT fan artist into making her own original content was the right decision for her to make? What do you think would have happened had she never transitioned away from just making fan art? Here's what they had to say in response. Um, I think Crumb transitioning away from being a Minecraft YouTube fan artist was a great decision because now she can make her own content and she's not latched to these big names anymore. Of course, she talks to them. Obviously, she's friends with some of them. Um, but having those name attached to you, that's the only thing you're going to have your name attached to. So now that she has her own content, she's making her own art, uh, that's a great step into improving your own content and just improving your art in general. Because now you're trying out new things. You're trying. You're not just drawing the same um, couple guys all the time. You are drawing what you want to draw. 
So I think it's great for her content, and now people um, can like her content even if they don't like Minecraft YouTube. It's a great uh, opportunity um, for her content in general. Um, if she had never transitioned away, um, I, I don't think much would change. She would still have her big platform because people love her art no matter what. She's got a great style. Um, I think she, she's been, I think she improved because she moved away from it though. I think having repetitiveness can be a downfall. And I, I experienced that as, a, as an artist myself. That's why I started drawing my own religion, original content as well. Uh, you get to branch out. And it's a great opportunity, I think, um, she has taken by doing so. Thanks for taking part in the video, Saturn. Let's now cover the relationships Crumb has formed throughout her online history. One of the most important things to do as a creator in this online space is to network with others, and if you fail to do that, you may struggle to find growth. However, it seems like Crumb had that figured out since the very beginning, since whether intentional or not, she found herself surrounded by many prominent people very early on in her online career, which is certainly quite impressive. I say this because for most, it can take years for them to start forming bonds with other creators. I know that it took me about two years of doing YouTube all by myself to begin to collaborate with other content creators that were my real life friends with like 50 subscribers. Anyway, as I mentioned in the Crumb's beginning section, if you can recall, I covered how Crumb met Sea Scooper Cooper early on since he had seen the animation that Crumb had made of Swagger and Slats, and upon seeing it, he had followed her back on Twitter. I speculated that Cooper and Crumb quickly hit it off, and as a result, Cooper introduced Crumb to other members of the community. At the time, Cooper formed part of what was once formally known as Lunch Club, a group of seven different content creators which many people refer to as the American version of the Misfits. Apart from Cooper, the other six members were Ted Nivison, Call Me Carson, Slimesicle, Travis, Hugbox, and Schlatt. All or if not most of which, Crumb had also made fan art of. But again, I'm sure Cooper played some part in Crumb meeting these people, since that's usually how it goes. You meet one, you meet them all. With that being said, I believe that Crumb's affiliation with the Lunch Club members led her to meeting other people she currently talks to, an example of which is Captain Sparkles, and as well as some of the Dream SMP members such as Wilbur Soot, Eric, and Michael McChill. From the previously mentioned names, Jordan, also known as Captain Sparkles, is someone that Crumb has formed a solid friendship with. So much so to the point where Crumb has included him in many of the animations on her channel. Not only this, but Jordan has featured her in numerous videos and video titles across both his primary and second channel. Many people have considered Jordan the father figure to Crumb, considering he's so much older than her, with the age gap being one of 13 years. Nevertheless, Plus, do you all remember the Dark Ages? What I'm referring to is the era from a few months back where Among Us content is all you'd see on every damn social media platform. It was inescapable. Well, I believe that part of what aided Crumb in forming even more connections was this era considering she took part in it by streaming the game over on her Twitch channel. Now frankly, I don't think I need to explain what Among Us is since everyone's familiar with it. And as much as you want to say you're not, I know you're lying to me, you pesky little twat. However, these lobbies Crumb took part in were often stacked with prominent content creators, such as Tubbo, Tapple, Captain Puffy, and Captain Sparkles. As you can expect, this inevitably helped her either develop new relationships with these people, or strengthen previously formed connections since these Among Us lobbies were pretty recurrent for a handful of weeks straight. As a matter of fact, this is how she met Jordan in the first place, and look at what came of it. But this eventually faded away into obscurity as interest in Among Us slowly but surely declined until it became nearly non-existent due to how oversaturated the market was. Everyone was just sick and tired of seeing the game everywhere they went. So Crumb went back to doing her own thing for some time until the CogChamp SMP was created, and she was invited to it. For those unfamiliar, which may be a handful of you since I hadn't even heard of this server before making this video, the CogChamp SMP was a survival multiplayer Minecraft server that used the Create mod. It began on December 31st, 2020, and has since then become inactive with no sign of it ever making a return. I believe it may be the shortest lived SMP of all time, considering that the members only played on it for 7 days and never looked back. But anyhow, the server consisted of six different members, which apart from Crumb were 5up, 
Tubbo, Fundy, Rambu, and All Sam Dude. So as you can tell, membership was pretty exclusive. Crumb just so happened to be fortunate enough to land herself a spot on the server. Although Crumb only played on it for one day, and that was the day she joined. That being January 14th, 2021. Since she only played on the server for one day, there's not much to know about her presence on the server, and the server in general, for that matter. However, the members have said that the server will eventually return, so only time will tell what happens. All in all though, whether or not it was her plan from the very beginning, Crumb was able to network with tons of other creators successfully. This undeniably assisted her in building a following tremendously. But it's clear to me that Crumb loves and cares deeply about her friends, since she always makes sure to express this over on her Twitter or in animations where she'll include them. But overall, I'm incredibly proud of how far Crumb has come, and I can't wait to see what the future holds in store for her. Speaking of which, I'd like to touch on this further. However, before doing so, it's question time baby <laughs> for this one i reached out to frogman one of crumb's close friends to ask him this question how have the connections that crumb has formed with prominent creators mostly in the minecraft community aided her in garnering a following before playing his response frogman mentioned to me that he accidentally said and later rambu but it turns out that crumb was actually friends with rambu before jack and fundy so just bear that in mind when listening to him anyhow here was his answer so Crumb really started to blow up on Twitter after he made an animation between Slimesicle and Hugbox um, following the Lunch Club Zoo video. Um, Slimesicle and Hugbox uh, replied to her, followed her, um, and Hugbox's banner was even Crumb's drawing for the longest time. Um, after that, her fan art and animations and just little drawings um, and people's replies got a lot of follows uh, by people like uh, Poke, Michael McChill, Crinios. Uh, I am Ty, um, people like that. And then uh, she ended up being friends with uh, C Scoop and Schlatt, who are like really big people in the SMP Life community. Um, and so that kind of floated her relevance uh, throughout SMP Live. Um, and then after SMP Live ended, uh, she kind of interactions with some of the bigger people, like Slime Sicole, uh, C Scoop and Schlatt kind of simmered down. Um, but she stayed in contact with people like Poke and I'm Ty, Kratios, um, and Ty even helped set up her stream uh, when she started streaming um, and being less of a fan artist and being more of a personal artist and a streamer. Um, and then uh, she kind of started rising in popularity again when um, Tommy, Nikki, and Wilbur, and Minx um, became friends with her and replied to her a lot. Um, she's appeared on Nikki's and Minx's streams a couple of times. Um, her Be Right Back screen with the, uh, the lollipop uh, came from a Wilbur tweet, or her reply to a Wilbur tweet. Um, and the nickname Krung, ending with NG, came from a Tommy reply. Um, and then that was kind of early S Dream SMP, or like right before Dream SMP. And as that moved on, um, Tommy and Wilbur kind of stopped replying to her. Wilbur stopped using Twitter. Um, but then uh, she became friends with people like Fundy and Tubbo and Jack Manifold, um, and then later Rambu, um, and now she's like a big trio with uh, Rambu and Tubbo. Um, you know, Jack Manifold replies to her a lot. Um, uh, Fundy, you know, got her to make some art for his game, um, and yeah, it's kind of gone from there. Thanks for participating in the video, Frogman. Let's now end the video by talking about Crumb's future. For those unaware, I usually tend to end these rise of videos by predicting what the content creator's future that I'm making the video on will look like. In this case, I'd like to take a shot at predicting Crumb's future, and again, these are just predictions, so please don't take them as gospel truths. First off, when taking into account her current rate of growth across all of her social media platforms, I think she'll be at anywhere between 300 and 400,000 YouTube subscribers, 250,000 Twitch followers and somewhere between 400 and 500,000 Twitter followers by the end of this year, beginning of next year. Secondly, I'm just going to be frank with you all, and I hope I'm not breaking any of the Minecraft Twitter stances legal hearts, but I don't think the COG Champ SP will ever make a return. It's been six months since the last streams took place on the server, so you'd think that if they wanted to bring it back, they would have already done so, but hey, that's just my opinion. Lastly, since I don't believe COG Champ is coming back anytime soon, I think Crumb has a real shot at becoming a Dream SP member. I see this 
this because she's friends with a good handful of the members, examples of which include Tubbo, Rambu, and Jack Manifold, so the possibility exists. However, regardless of whether or not these predictions end up being accurate, you can't deny that Crumb has found herself in an ideal situation, and it's inevitable that she will continue to grow her platform as well as her circle of friends as time goes on. Anyhow, before wrapping the video up, I've got another question. This time around, I reached out to Drew's Rad, another one of Crumb's Twitch mods, to ask them this. Where do you see Crumb in the future? Here's what they had to say. Crumb just has this wonderful ability to be successful at pretty much anything she does. She's great at animation, she's great at streaming and making people happy with her streams, she's great at entertaining people, so I can definitely see her being successful in the future. If it's a career in animation, then I respect that. If it's a career in streaming and Twitch streaming, then I respect that too. But I definitely think Crumb is going to be successful in the future. She's already built so much of a community and the community is so amazing and I'm just glad to be a part of it. And I'm excited to see where she goes in the future. Thanks for partaking in the video, Drew. So now that everything has been said and done, let's close this video off. In conclusion, Crumb is someone who, despite her young age, has accomplished a lot. Now don't get me wrong, I don't mean to use her age as a demeaning thing, I'm just mentioning it since, frankly, most people at her age don't know what the hell they want to do with their lives, or they're just misusing their time by smoking weed or just generally doing dumb shit. But on the other hand, Crumb seems to have a good head on her shoulders, with an immense talent for both art and animation. She also clearly understands the concept of networking and how to take the fullest advantage of it. So all things considered, I'm eagerly anticipating what Crumb's future looks like, as I'm sure that it's going to be nothing but spectacular. But besides that, that about concludes the video. Thank you so much for watching and if you made it this far. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do feel free to drop the video a like, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Thanks again to everyone who participated in the video. If you so wish, you can go and check them all out, as their links will be down in the description below. Although I'd appreciate it if you gave every one of them a follow. Once again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always I'll see you next one